Hi guys, so today I wanted to share with you some of my favorite products. Wait, 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 wait. hold up. You're not a beauty vlogger. Marin, what are you doing? What's going on here? Oh my god, I've been sucked in by the multi-billion dollar beauty industry that constantly tells me that I'm not good enough the way I naturally look and I need to spend vast amounts of money that I don't have on pokey, sparkly, painty stuff. Ah! Okay, but all jokes aside, I, like millions of other women, and men, I guess, routinely paint my face different colors to go out into the world, which, when put that simply, kind of seems like a barbarian concept, but the substances that we put on our skin every day are actually the result of some pretty interesting chemistry. So let's take this situation from barefaced to glam, and we'll talk about how all of this magic actually works on your face. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a primer. And also, sidebar, I'm not gonna talk about what brand of all of this I'm using because number one, I'm not a corporate chill, and number two, it all cost way too much. So primers usually contain smoothing and filling agents like silicone. Unlike moisturizers, which are designed to sink into the upper layer of your skin, primers sit on top of your skin and on a microscopic level, fill in lines and pores to create a smooth surface for your makeup to sit on top of. They can also help make your makeup last longer, and the primary reason makeup fits fades or slides off is because of your facial oil secretion or sweat, and a primer acts as a barrier between that and your makeup. Silicones are actually really cool because they can ionically bond with your skin. The molecules in our skin are slightly negatively charged naturally, and silicones can be given a positive charge when they're produced, so the primer containing the silicones actually chemically bonds to your skin. Which is like a little freaky, but also like really cool. Eh, okay, so next we move on to the eyes, because I'm not a skilled makeup lady, so if I do my eyes after the rest of my face, like half of my eyeshadow will end up like down here. So we do this first. This is what they look like. They're so pretty. The sparkles. I love the sparkles. Dude, we're like goldfish. We just love anything sparkly and shiny. At least I do. <clears throat> so eyeshadow is made up of three main things, fillers, binders, and pigment. The filler is usually talc or some other kind of natural, mineral, harmless powder that is the actual stuff that you put on your skin. Pigments are careful concoctions of elements that show up naturally as brightly colored, though usually we make most of these in the lab these days. And the pigment and the powder that you actually put on your eyes are sort of kept together by a binder, which may be an oil or a wax or another kind of powder. That's what gives it its creaminess or stickiness that helps it actually stay on your face. Now we shall do some eyeliner. This is a similar concept to eyeshadows in that it's a pigment suspended in oil and waxes. Depending on the composition of these elements, you get a pencil eyeliner with a solid pigment, which is usually wax-based, or a liquid eyeliner mixed with oils and binding agent. Also, just never ask a woman with perfectly winged eyeliner why she's late, because this is, this is why. I'm gonna use this medieval torture device to make my eyelashes curly, which is apparently a thing we've decided we need to have. And then I'm gonna use the mascara. Ooh, I love that sound. Wait, let me put it up close to my mic. Mascara wand coming out of the tube is like, one of the most satisfying sounds in the whole world. Did you know that the first widely used mainstream mascara produced by Maybelline in 1915, by the way, was made out of coal dust and petroleum jelly? Depending on the brand and the formula of the mascara, so like if it's supposed to be thickening or lengthening or whatever bull pigment is mixed with a wax and an oil and usually some kind of gum, like xanthan gum, to make it tacky enough to actually stick to your lashes when it dries. Okay, then we're gonna move on to concealer and foundation-y type stuff to get rid of the evidence that our body is constantly telling us that we're not getting enough sleep. I like to use a sponge because I think they're more fun than brushes because they're so, so bouncy. This is basically the same concept as most of the previous items. Pigments mixed together with oils, waxes, adhesives, and thickeners. But something new this time is an agent that suspends the pigments in the rest of the solution. Because without these, all the pigment in your foundation would separate and sink to the bottom and uh, congeal as a solid, which is not 
not delightful. This is the part that always freaked me out the most because like you're covering your face in a foreign substance and like expecting your skin to be okay with it. Some studies come to the conclusion that certain ingredients in face products can clog your pores or do damage to your skin over time, while other studies have shown that wearing foundation can actually protect your skin from environmental damage and pollution. And honestly, it's just such a personal thing that it really comes down to your individual skin type and the products you choose to put on it. So the usual answer that science gives us about a lot of things applies here, which is it all depends. Okay, next we set all of this nonsense with a powder. This step is called setting your makeup because it keeps any cream or liquid products from creasing or moving around. These kinds of powders, again, are usually naturally talc or silicone based and they form a thin layer of dry powderiness over the liquid which keeps it from sticking to itself and bunching up which is what causes creasing and additionally uh, the powder can form an extra layer over your skin and throughout the day absorb oil so that you don't look as shiny although i mean like if you want to be shiny girl do your thing that's one of the things about makeup that i usually disagree with is that like there are certain standards that you have to adhere to in order to look good it's like no if i want to do red eyeshadow and deep purple lipstick like i'm gonna do me okay next we're gonna do brows because like they're there but we want them to be more there or something is there a tangible difference i don't know okay now we do blush bronzer and highlighter because once we've taken all of the color out of our face with our foundation, we want to put some back on again, but this time in the place we want the color to be, because that makes sense, and control! Ooh, I dropped a brush! Okay, I do have to talk about one product really quick. I'm not going to tell you who it's by, but like, just can we talk about how beautiful this is? Ooh, the sparkle. It's like, it's so beautiful, I want to eat it. But like, please don't do that, because you might die. And we just like move it around with a fluffy brush because we like obviously don't look natural because we've put all of this on our face but like we want it to look as natural as possible you know and we bronze to make it look like we haven't been living in england for six months and like we've been to the beach and we see the sun on a regular basis which is a lie Excellent. And lastly, lips. Again, this is the usual formula of stuff that puts this together. What I find really interesting is that women across all kinds of cultures have come to the same conclusion that we want to make our lips appear fuller and redder and emphasize the prominence of our eyes. These trends are pretty much directly tied to evolution. Women who are ovulating experience a hormonal shift that enhances blood flow to our whole bodies, including our faces, which makes us flush more easily in the cheeks and it makes our lips appear redder. The skin near women's eyes also tends to be darker than men's just all the time, so eyeshadow and liner and mascara enhance this sex difference. So several studies have shown that faces whose features stand out more in comparison to their skin tone are perceived as more feminine faces. Basically, makeup just advertises an illusion of health and sexual availability. It's all biology, baby. But that's just the bottom layer of reasoning why makeup is a thing that we do. Many women, myself included, think that makeup is a fun way to express yourself and make yourself feel confident. Not because we don't like the way we look without it, but because it's like putting on a new outfit. It can be a little bit like another layer of protection or preparation, battle armor, if you will. It can help you feel ready to go out and take on the day. So, to everyone watching this, please know you are beautiful and enough just as you are, but if you like to play with makeup, go you! Do your thing! The only person you have to make happy is you. Et voila, my go-to makeup look and some science because that's my life. Can't be bothered, and I'm not actually going anywhere today. I'm just gonna sit in this lovely makeup look in my pajamas and edit this video. Probably watch some TV and eat some stuff. So, I hope you learned something today about makeup, about science, and I am the gremlin who will see you 
next time. Bye. 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 Bye.